<laughs> Let's take it. Please give us your name and uh, where you're from. Hi, Gary. Um, I'm at Notorious Nicola on Twitter. You, tw you tweeted me earlier. Notorious Hi. Nicola Champagne. How are you? Um, like, love you. <laughs> um, so, sorry. <laughs> um, so, I have a website selling luxury sex toys and designer bedroom accessories. Yeah. Yep. Um, Lacoquette.com, if anyone wants anything. Um, it's a really niche market. Privacy is dead. <laughs> Um, really niche market, and I was interested in what you were saying earlier about going around the sort of, I have big, really big competitors who can throw a lot of money at stuff and yep. really discount, and I'm trying to operate in a more luxury without being, you know, too, yes. too niche. What advice would you give someone Content. Like you? Yeah. Content is the game. You have to, I, I get Wait, it. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, listen, this is what she sells. Yeah. She's got no problem with what's your problem. I'm shy. I'm saving myself. Yeah. I get it. Is yeah. that what you put in, Raj? Yeah. yeah, Raj. What? I put, in, I put in what? Raj. Wait, what? I just got told I had to put something in. I didn't even hear the first part of that sentence. I, I'm worried. I, I think that you need to really, you know, to me, it's about content. So you, you think of something iconic like Playboy, right? It wasn't just the pictures. There was other things that fed to the demo. I would do a really, if, if we were working together, I'd actually look at who's actually buying the product I was about to say that actually because I set up a really female focused website and still 60% of the people who buy from me are men yep. and, and it's how to really harness, harness that market for me because, rather than fighting to harness another market that won't come to me. So Listen, I think, I think that there's a lot of tasteful ways for you to be very successful in using things. I mean, I would tell you that Pinterest infographics for you, mm -hmm. for the female, 40% yep. is a complete no-brainer. Yep. I would tell you that you've got to do a lot more blogging and co it's, listen, to give an answer that will benefit everybody, every single person in this room and every one of your businesses slash organizations, your teacher, whatever you do, every one of them, you and the business, you are in the media business. You're not in the sex toy business, you're in the media business, comma, sex toy business. Got it? Yep. Media business, comma, DJ. <laughs> Shy sex toy guy. Right? So, so, the second everybody in this room, the Michelin Tire Company, the Michelin Tire Company 100 years ago had a business problem. People weren't driving enough yet to wear out their tires and thus they didn't buy tires. Do you know what they did? They started the Michelin Review. The reason there's three star Michelins, my friends, is because a tire company needed people to drive. And so they went out to the countryside and started reviewing the best restaurants and all these things and made it up because they probably wanted to say the best foie gras was the furthest place out. <laughs> then they took the books, put it in London and Paris and got people to draw. Somebody would pick up a book at the fancy you know, place and be like, oh, the best foie gras is in Burgundy. Honey, we're going to Burgundy this weekend. And started, they literally fixed their business problem of using tires by getting people to go far away by using media. One of the things you could be talking about, you should be talking about cigars and golf and what you call yeah. football and I call soccer. You could be blogging about this right. and you should be looking at things like Buzzfeed yep. who make content that's viral, right? Okay. You should have a blog post putting like the seven best balls, you know, <laughs> right? And so like, there's a lot of plays yeah. that you can have yeah. but you need to become a media company. The only way you're gonna be able to beat competitors that can throw money against search, which I'm sure is a huge driver for your industry. Absolutely. The only way you're gonna be able to compete with that is to become the authority of content. Right. It's why I started Wine Library TV, right? I became the wine spectator, Jancis Robinson, Robert Parker, right? You need to do that, okay. but you don't have to just do it as direct as I did with Wine Library TV. We're pitching a client right now that sells crackers to become the leading reviewer of cheese. Right? Yeah. And, and so like you can play with things that are within the world of the thing that you actually sell. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. But you have to do it. Right? Like, like, it's like exercise, right? Like this book and what I just told you is right. Right? But so is the way to get a six pack in your stomach. Right? There's a right way to get a six pack for your stomach. There's exercises. Right? And there's a diet. I know what they are. I'm not doing it. <laughs> So, so I, I can tell you what to do. I can write for $30, you can find out what to do. But the problem is, back to that other question where I got kind of like 
in my zone, it's execution. You know what the answers are, maybe you don't. There's plenty of people that look like myself that can give you a lot of good ones, but you have to pick them and actually do them, period. London. We got another question back here. When I heard one of my brands paid $400,000 for a web experience, when I know how much it cost Foursquare to build fucking Foursquare, not some dumb fucking landing page, I shit my pants. <laughs> so like if I put you on Snapchat and it gets you a ton of press and that helps you get a better relationship with your biggest customer, wasn't that a good reason to do it? Everybody's just too black and white. The world is gray. <laughs>